Uh, so welcome, folks, uh, to an end user panel. This is where people that actually use OpenStack uh, talk about their thoughts, their trials, their tribulations, and all that fun stuff. Um, I'm Das Kamhout. I'm a principal engineer at Intel. I used to run uh, a massive Intel uh, cloud. Um, my background's in, in grid computing, and then I, I helped build all of our OpenStack environment. Um, and now I work in our data center group, and our job is to do engineering and help everybody else in the world uh, do cool stuff with clouds. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, and have the audience, the, the panel, introduce themselves. We won't have all the audience introduce <laughs> yourselves. Um, so just uh, guys, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what does your company do. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and start? Okay. Um, hello everyone. I'm Francisco Raya. I work for Kio Networks. We are one of the uh, largest data centers in Latin America. I am the uh, DevOps team lead. Uh, we have uh, many data centers uh, across all uh, South America, Latin America, uh, North America, and Europe. And we uh, started working with OpenStack in 2012, uh, starting a long road ago. And we are currently using OpenStack to deploy all our cloud efforts. And where are you, Mexico City? Yeah, we are Mexico City based. Good, good mez mezcal that you can find there. Right? Little. <laughs> okay. And Al Pastor. Okay, Dion. Hello, my name is Dion Verbavel. Uh, I'm within BMW Group, responsible for OpenStack solutions. Um, within BMW, we're using OpenStack since Icehouse release, uh, currently running the Juno release, uh, and trying to get as much uh, workloads as we can on the OpenStack solution. And what kind of BMW do you drive? <laughs> I think I cannot say that in front okay. of the camera. Okay. <laughs> you, you have an I-8, right? Every BMW employee gets an I-8, right? No? We're not okay. allowed to say that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we try. So he said yes. <laughs> All right. I'm uh, Justin Detman. I'm with uh, Thomson Reuters. Uh, Thomson Reuters delivers uh, information to uh, business and professionals, so the financial industry, legal, tax, that kind of kind of thing. I'm an infrastructure architect uh, with responsibility for our OpenStack deployment, and uh, I've been working with uh, Cloud OpenStack, and before that we had a, had a Cloud Stack deployment, but we're relatively recent to, uh, to OpenStack and our uh, running Icehouse. Awesome. I'm Anand Palaniswamy. I work for EBN Paper, and uh, I manage the Cloud Networking Group. That includes SDN, Neutron, DNS, and Load Balancer as a system. Is your mic on? Now it's on. Okay. Yeah, you have to say it again. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, my name is Anand Palnisamy. I uh, work for EBN PayPal and I manage the cloud networking group and that includes SDN, Neutron, LBAS, DNS and uh, I manage both uh, for EBN PayPal. So we are, I would say actually we are one of the largest OpenStack private cloud in the world and uh, we take serious production traffic. It's not like, you know, we just use it only for, you know, developer cloud or QA or whatever. So we use it in serious production and recently we announced around PayPal side, 100% of you know web and meet and APIs are taking uh, only on uh, OpenStack. So it's a significant achievement. We started in uh, 2012 August with uh, I would say around 16 uh, 16 unused compute nodes in the lab. Now we are on several thousand stuff in the data center. Really, so it's a lot of journey. Of course, I'll be sharing most of it during this panel, but uh, it's, a, it's a lot of you know kickbacks, but. So Anon's one of the original gangsters in OpenStack, so he's an OG. Okay, so uh, we're going to go through a bunch of questions, and again, we can do we can do audience questions too. So you have something you really want to hear from the esteemed panel here, feel free to step up to the mic. Okay, so um, just you know uh, quickly, you know what what's the version where you first thought about OpenStack? Uh, what's the version that you first deployed, and what version are you on now? Let's go ahead. Okay, we'll start to hear about OpenStack in the Cactus release. We'll start our first deployment, our public cloud solution with the ESX. A lot of problems there, but we are currently using from Juno and Icehouse and are starting to uh, develop our private cloud solution with Kilo. Great. Um, we started to think about OpenStack or cloud in general already. I think during ESSEC release, but during the Havana release, it was really being discussed that we should start deploying it. Our first lab deployment was with uh, Icehouse, and currently we're running Juno in production. All right, so uh, 
we in 2012 realized that we were seeing a lot of our uh, business units going out to the public cloud providers really just for um, compute, which we could deliver on a, a private cloud. So kind of looking at what was available, we looked at uh, what options were available in the market at that time. Um, we ended up going with CloudStack initially just because OpenStack at that time was much more of an engineering exercise to get up and uh, running um, and uh, realized we'd probably need to reevaluate that at some point in time to see what, uh, what happened. Um, looking back, we probably first started seriously looking at OpenStack in the Grizz early release and uh, ultimately ended up deploying IceHouse. Excellent. And on? Yeah, so we started with SX. Of course, I played with Diablo, and then, but we deployed SX. We started with uh, two racks uh, with a quarter million dollar of investment as a startup company. So, <laughs> quarter million dollar? Yeah, quarter million dollar, two racks. We could buy only two racks for that. By the way, it's a good seed. Start. Yeah, good seed. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we started with SX, and uh, we directly went to the production, so for the PayPal side and EBS side. Actually, we were in both uh, the, uh, production as well as uh, Dev and then QA Cloud. Today, actually, we are running you know, uh, Havana everywhere, and uh, we are halfway through in upgrading uh, Juno. And uh, I'll share more pain points and why it is getting delayed and delayed. In, you know, <laughs> okay. upgrading larger infrastructure with OpenStack. Everybody wants rolling upgrades. So Justin, you were talking a little bit about how you saw uh, people using using uh, public clouds for compute. So one thing I want to kind of look at from each of you is, is what's the two top reasons that you deployed OpenStack? Let's go ahead and start. Yeah, I heard I, one of them. <laughs> I, I think the, the other one was just, uh, we, we, we were initially seeing some users you know, looking for, for infrastructure as a service. I say the other, the other piece of it is just the, the speed of delivery, recognizing that uh, there were some bottlenecks in order for the, the development groups that we support to, uh, to really innovate and um, be able to get the infrastructure they need to, to develop, to do testing, and eventually roll out to, to production. Um, there's just a lot, of, a lot of buzz out there in, in cloud, and we're see we were seeing requests from our, our business units as well to really start moving down that path. Dion, why, why did BMW, what were the two top reasons you guys deployed it? The two top reasons, uh, also the DevOps basically, uh, we start running them away from the central IT, going to other or make their own solutions, uh, but we want to get those workloads back uh, in a central manner and for that OpenStack is uh, just a nice or very well EAS platform, uh, infrastructure as service. Uh, you can with yeah, really easily deploy workloads or virtual machines and people are up and running. Anything uh, either one of you guys want to add on about uh, another reason? Yeah, so I would say, you know, OpenStack is not, uh, you know, we just use it for, you know, because the source is in the open source, right? Because we, at least enough for me, it's a platform to collaborate between our vendors and partners as well as internally. So basically, you know, for example, you know, if, if someone is uh, uh, managing a larger infrastructure, of course, everyone will have scripts and then automation and whatnot. And we wanted to bring all this effort into a single place. So the code is being in the GitHub, in the private or public or whatever. And if you want to go and enhance some part of infrastructure, better be part of this. So I see it as in a collaboration platform where we clearly say, okay, this is our way of integrating with our uh, you know, vendor products. And as long as you have the you know, drivers and plugins, actually we'll test it on our lab, and then if it qualify for our workloads, we'll get into the infrastructure. I'm more excited about that. You know, even Subu talked about in you know, the keynote. So let's have, keep the APIs open, but innovate everything behind that. Right. But it, but I, I feel actually OpenStack perfectly fits for that. Good, so, so yeah. being that API, yeah. For existing gear, yep. new gear, yep. allows to push the envelope below. Exactly. And DevOps guys can do all yep. kinds of crazy just stuff above. Yeah, just don't change anything in the APIs. Exactly. Yeah, keep them solid. Exactly. Well, and in our case, we had uh, previous uh, clouds with uh, another vendor-based uh, providers. We put into an exercise of comparison of features, and OpenStack is the most uh, adaptable uh, platform that we had, and uh, that's why we choose them to uh, deploy our OpenStack clouds. So it sounds like most of you uh, had maybe something before that yeah, gave yeah. self-service yeah. to an extent and, and moved over to, exactly. to OpenStack. Definitely, we see this trend happening. Um, so let's jump to another one. Uh, there's, there's lots of distros available. Um, I've heard a lot of people at the summit talking about uh, do it yourself, um, and there's other options too. So just you know, just high level. Are you guys using a distro? You don't have to say which one unless you want to. Uh, are you doing it yourself, or, or, or is there somewhere you want to be um, in a year that's different than what you're doing today? Anand, why don't you start? Yeah, so we are using our own. 
uh, we, we package ourselves and uh, we run through our CACD and the big, uh, fix the bugs and then harden it and then upgrade it to our infrastructure. So, so did you have to hire a bunch of PhDs to pull this off or do you, uh, where, do you, where do you get them from? <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, you know, unfortunately, we used to uh, we had PhDs to work on that, and now you know we are at a point we you know uh, ran through that path where where exactly you know uh, we identified a CI/CD infrastructure. Today, actually, you bring in upstream changes and then run through your CI/CD, and now of course they have worked on that. Until unless you have the muscle, you can't run for the marathon. Of course, the PhDs work for you know getting ready for the you know marathon. Now they are running marathon. Okay. And uh, now, actually, they're working on the features and then SDN and then storage and compute and then the core, core services. Of course, before we get there, we need to build that muscle and then they worked on that. Okay, so now you're, you're running yep. the marathon. Yes, exactly. Keep going. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. All what right. Seeing, Justin? So we're, uh, we're running to distro. I think there's really, really two reasons that, uh, that we opted for that. One is, as an enterprise, we're always very cautious, right? And so to have a distro, you've got a vendor that you can kind of lean on for some, some assistance. The other part of it is um, looking at starting from, um, from scratch is uh, pretty daunting. So you, you need a lot of people with a lot of skills in order to be able to, to pull directly from, uh, from stable release and be able to, to get it all up and running. So I think looking at a distro also allows you to really bootstrap it and get something up and running that, that actually works so you can demonstrate the, the value of it. Um, without having to figure out all the, the bits of how to make it work yourself. Exactly. Um, we're currently also using a distro for it, uh, basically for the same reasons as my neighbor already said. Um, as an enterprise, you're quite anxious about things, especially uh, open source things. Uh, we don't have a large development team for backing us up, and that's why we want to fall back to an support provider being our distro in this case. But we're also currently noticing us while we're ramping up that uh, using a distribution is has the chance to limiting you in the possibilities. As a distro cannot support all features that OpenStack is offering you at the moment. And we're quite getting to a point that we might have to reevaluate uh, what path we are going to follow within the next years. OK, so you want to be more flexible and you feel you're, yes. you're being squeezed to a specific set of Indeed. capabilities. Is it, are, you, are you seeing this too in what you have, Justin? Oh, absolutely. So I, I, as I mentioned, we're still on, uh, still on Ice House for a release, but there's, there's been stuff that's, uh, that's come along that I'd like to really get integrated into our, our environment. And uh, we've ended up doing a couple things, things ourselves, but I also feel very limited that I don't want to deviate too much from our distro because you know, that potentially makes the upgrade in the future a lot more difficult. Exactly. And if you, that's also what we noticed, if you change things yourself in the distro, as soon as you get an update package, the things you modified have been reverted to the things the distribution wanted you to do. Yeah. And then you start backporting and changing and you keep on going. And then you end up with a lot of spaghetti code. <laughs> what, what are you guys doing at Kia? Yeah. Well, we, what we do is to um, deploy our open stack of vanilla open stack over a custom Linux distribution, but uh, we wait for a couple of months before uh, everything keeps um, stable, and then we, we uh, release a new version for private cloud. Uh, we, we are 20 people, we are not a big team, and what we do is to rely on providers to support our, our environments, in, in this case, we are even looking for uh, some partners to well, uh, support our RFP open stack right clouds. <laughs> yeah. Any vendors out there? That yeah, yeah. This <laughs> Kio Network is calling, and really, they have great Al Pastor tacos, huh? right? Yeah. Exactly. Pastor. If they haven't had Al Pastor, they should try it, right? That's for sure. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, we covered support. We covered distros. Um, if you think back, I mean, most of you've been on on a journey here for a while, at least at least a year or two or, or, or more. Wow, three, four. Whoa. Um, it's been a long, strange journey. So if you, if you think about uh, what, what you could have done differently, uh, you know, a, a plus or a minus in your journey to production OpenStack, what, what would it be? Let's start over. Well, in our case, we start with a public cloud. And I think uh, one of the mistakes we made was to uh, not, um, not secure enough our public, this public cloud environment. Uh, there was a lot of issues with the networking. We had uh, many troubles with uh, some DOS attacks and something like that. That uh, at that time, with this X, it wasn't that uh, uh, 
documented, you know. So we started to, uh, or, or we had to uh, limit the instances uh, networking and putting uh, firewalls over these uh, solutions so we can, uh, we are being able to uh, start working uh, with a good uh, level of services. Okay. Diane, how, anything that you would uh, change in your journey? Or do differently? <laughs> do differently. Um, that's a good one. Um, I think that seeing this journey, uh, we're, as we said, we're just starting and uh, I already said it previous, I think the thing that I would like to change in our journey is the thing that we would like to be more flexible. Uh, because, but that's mostly because we're using the distribution. <coughs> Um, but that is got it so I'll talk about something that's not specifically related to the OpenStack technology but from a capacity planning perspective so we uh, as I'd mentioned had a had a different uh, technology that we used for running our uh, private cloud we uh, really did some calculations based on what we were running there and, and thought that's what we were going to need for, for capacity in our OpenStack cloud. And we, we keep having to add more and more hardware. User demand has been really difficult to, uh, to predict. We have a, um, a self-service interface for users to come in. They can request a project in our, in our OpenStack cloud. There's a little bit of governance that, that sets some quotas. And uh, the interest has really surprised us. And it's even been more than we'd had in our, in our previous cloud. Yeah, there's a, there's a thing we even talk about at Intel publicly. There's a guy named Jevin. He's an 1800 economist, and there's the Jevons paradox, which is as you, you make a computing more efficient, or actually any resource more efficient, and you give it self-service so it's easier to consume, <laughs> people just skyrocket their usage. And I mean, this is what happened in the yeah. public cloud. So oh, absolutely. It's definitely happening in private clouds now. So, uh, But the developers get to innovate on top, hopefully. Yeah. Anand, anything you would have done differently? Yeah. Well, actually, one thing what we did right is you know, directly going to the production. Directly, <laughs> jump right in. <laughs> yeah, so I would say because a lot of people say actually why you went to you know production directly, right? In fact, actually building a you know develop uh, dev and QA cloud is tougher than you know building the production cloud because the reason is such a rate of change in developer cloud is a lot. Right. Right. The number of API requests that you make on automations and then CIs and whatnot, it's more tougher than the production cloud because production you don't change maybe your application pool every day or maybe every minute, and we have some CI infrastructure that. Uh, you know, creates every minute actually hundreds of hundreds of you know <coughs> VMs, and then attaching, detaching the volumes, and every minute actually you know sometimes they attach and detach. Some people they you know recently we ran into an issue, uh, hundred volumes they want to attach to a single VM, and uh, we could scale up to seventy or eighty or whatever. But finally we said we are going to be supporting only fifty, right? But it's not the case in production. <laughs> got it. Got it. So they really push the envelope. Exactly. Well, if you look at most public clouds, I don't think they distinguish their infrastructure between. Uh, Non-prod or, or prod, right? It's all treated the same. So yeah, no, 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 it's the same for all. Of, uh, right. It's the same cloud now. Yeah, for you guys, it's the same. same. You're happy you made it all identical. Um, okay, so uh, and again, audience questions are, are good anytime, but you got to go to the mic. You have to go to the mic if you want to do an audience question. Just go on up, and, and then I'll, I'll jump right to you. Um, and I'll actually go ahead. Sure. I like to know how you convince your upper management to use uh, relatively speaking new open source open stack. I think many upper management uh, who are not necessarily IT uh, experts sure. uh, most likely good. think that the you know large vendor supplied sure. uh, software uh, support and all of that may be safer to the corporations. Yeah, and you guys want to take that? Sure, I could take that actually. So I'm from that journey from day one. Yeah, it was not an easy journey where uh, when we started looking at you know multiple options in terms of infrastructure automation right in 2012 August specifically so what happened was uh, we had uh, five different vendor solutions and three different open sources I'm I, I'm writing a blog post also on that so it was not an easy decision of course you know uh, what's your core business whether it's building the infrastructure and then you know building your own you know private cloud and then going and taking something from the open source and then put your muscle into that and then running it right but we went back and forth on that. Of course, you know, uh, we did a POC in the lab. Of course, you know, the POC that two uh, PK that I talked about, that's a POC money, right? And uh, management, you know, decided to invest on that, and uh, we were very successful in that. And we ran production workload on that in 2012 December. We started in August, and then 2012 December we ran production, 
And we compared you know, all of our results, whatever actually the existing bare metals and the existing stack, whatever we are running it in the data center. And when we compared with this one, KVM versus uh, you know, uh, whatever the open stack uh, VMs we are running. Surprisingly, the results was, you know, Igor is right here, and we you know, uh, compared the results. And we got better results. And there is no brainer, actually. So every investment after that went into this direction. In fact, actually, I did talk to you know, OpenStack marketing team and also Jonathan as well on this. And uh, we are going to be publishing one of the blog posts on that. So it was a very interesting journey. And most of the time, I get all these questions from the community member. They are able to get into, uh, you know, able to get to decide their cloud operating system. And I keep replying back the same question over and over. And I'm you know, putting the same question in the community also. Uh, and uh, the journey that we went through, of course, you know, it's not an easy decision. Um, you know, we took very cautiously the de decisions, but we continue to go on that path. And even, you know, we recently announced around 100 percent of web and uh, you know, API traffic's, uh, traffic is running on OpenStack for PayPal. You know, it is a consistent journey. Of course, we burnt on fingers some places, but uh, we all, you know, got through that. But uh, you know, uh, well, thank you for blazing a trail. So yes. you, you started small, you yeah. showed the results, comparisons, yeah. Yeah. good engineering, and, and yeah. shared up. And we consistently stick to that plan, actually. You know, for the next two years, we know what exactly needs to be done and what kind of resources we need, what kind of talents we need. Most of the time, you know, you need that, uh, you know, how you, because look at from, you know, two years from now what you need and then backtrack from there. And one uh, good thing that we had, actually, OpenStack is new to our infrastructure maybe, but uh, we had experience in operating, you know, thousands of thousands of, you know, bare metal servers and the infrastructure, and that we leveraged that, you know, best practices. So did you guys have a, a, a different approach to get your upper management to so, agree? So I'll just, I'll just add a little bit, and uh, looking at what we do do as a company, um, we do a lot of tel and uh, do a lot of uh, a lot of technology. We deliver information to our, our customers, and I'd say from the the top level leadership, there's a recognition that the world is changing. Um, we don't necessarily want to be a cloud provider, but they recognize to build the products that we want to sell to our customers, we probably need to provide that infrastructure platform to do it. Um, I think that leads into a little bit of why we're running a distro instead of us, uh, you know, rolling our own OpenStack because that's not really our our area of expertise. Our area of expertise is the products, but I think there's that recognition from our senior leadership in the company that you know if we are going to stay competitive, we need to innovate and. Um, having a cloud platform on which to, to do that is part of that strategy. Dial, any additional Any thoughts? addition? In the, for us, it was not too hard as uh, the upper management in our case was already aware that uh, OpenStack is quite booming, quite growing fast. And if you look back at our landscape, uh, there are already hundreds, thousands of Linux servers running in the end. Linux is also an open source product. It's just about the maturity of the product. And therefore, yeah, as an enterprise, uh, you go back to your vendor. And that's why we did the pilot. And with testing and that kind of stuff, we already found quite fast out it's a major product. And although, it, of course, there are things that there were bugs, but the, there's an active community working on that. Uh, things get fixed. At the moment that you found the bug, it's most likely already fixed. So it was not too hard for us to convince the upper management. Good. I think Linux really blazed the trail for, for open source, right? Yes. Every, yeah. Almost every major public cloud is Linux behind it. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump to a, a yes or no answer. Woo. Uh, so will OpenStack control most of your data center infrastructure in three years? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. No. <laughs> no. That's good. No. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah, actually, you know. Uh, no, yes or no? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we can. Next one's not yes or no, but those are always fun. Uh, we won't do Jeopardy this time. Next time, you guys question? do Jeopardy. Um, so uh, you said no, but I'm not going to ask you why. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of my later questions. We'll we'll dig into that. Um, so, uh, so we have a, any uh, anybody from the design teams here? Oh, no, not the design team. Just had a oh, that's fine. You got a question? Yeah. You can ask a question. Um, what was the biggest mental hurdle for getting OpenStack deployed? Um, was there anything that you spent like a week just banging your head against your desk before you realized what the solution was? Or there was some configuration thing or something like that, that when you got it, it you're like, oh, I feel stupid now for not realizing this. Well, at first, uh, when we deployed uh, E6, there wasn't a guide 
to uh, start the installation from zero to production. We we were working but about uh, two months, three months, finding the solutions, finding this this guide that doesn't six. So we coming to uh, looking for three guides that we mixed up, and uh, finally we got the installation. And at that time, I didn't knew OpenStack. My guys doesn't did uh, didn't know OpenStack also. Uh, we were just like kids uh, working with a new toy. But now we are very mature. We have uh, our strong team that is in Glorious DevOps and they have obsessive support about this. And we are very, very, very confident in how we can uh, support this kind of solution. You have to keep just your hands on the installation and on the uh, deployment and you will be very confident that. So you went like kid to adult in like three years, two years? Three. That's pretty <laughs> rapid. Any, any thoughts, mental challenge? Yeah, the mental challenge actually debugging, right? So debugging. It's debugging. Uh, even one of our availability zone recently, uh, you know, uh, we have multiple, and one of them actually we couldn't figure out uh, why the timing, uh, why the Nova boot is timing out, and uh, we debugged as much as possible for you know m maybe half, more than half a day, and some of them are going through, some of them are not going through. So as usual, it's all related to you know uh, RabbitMQ, right? <laughs> and uh, so if you look at actually every blame will come on OpenStack after that, but it's not really because there was networking fla uh, network flapping happening. And uh, you know, consi uh, consistently, you know, the messages are getting dropped. And uh, you know, but uh, one thing actually, I would say actually, it's an OpenStack problem where uh, you know, uh, see, infrastructure will fail. And uh, as a you know, uh, client of uh, you know, Nova or whatever, right, you need to gracefully you know, handle all these uh, use cases, or maybe the corner cases. That is not being handled in every aspect of uh, the core services yet. Even something happens because completely you are relying on RabbitMQ. But uh, you know, something happens to that particular. You know, how gracefully you are going to be handling all this? Maybe you know, collect all this, you know, uh, request and then process it offline once everything is stable or whatever, right? Or maybe what is that net threshold actually you can handle? Or maybe give a meaningful, you know, messages to the users, right? And the you know, error handling and then you know, messages uh, OpenStack gives back to the user today. It's not uh, user friendly at all. That creates in a problem for the guys who are debugging itself. Right. So we banged you know, a lot of our head, uh, you know, most recently actually. So, <laughs> just, just when you would. yeah. So, uh, you know, the I, th I think the question is what are the mental obstacles or you know trying to figure stuff out. And uh, I'd say one of the biggest challenges is the the shift that we we went through. We brought in a lot of new technology, right? And to try and figure out like how does Open vSwitch work and how does Ceph work and KVM and all the all these pieces and really just the introduction of a whole bunch of new technology at once is challenging and as you were asking the question I was thinking about the time that I was like banging my head against my desk for like a week trying to figure out how to run these OVS port create commands to get the the, the ports I needed created because it's just such a dramatic shift in what you're what, what you're accustomed to, to doing but uh, to, to addition to that indeed it's also the oper you will learn the operation while using the product yeah. you know your customer is going to give you some challenges and on the fly you have to find out how things really work. Like uh, for the Ceph product, uh, it's an amazing technology, but if one bit falls the wrong direction, it can could give you some challenges. New technology, uh, you, yeah, we had some lots of fun and entertainment with it in general, but it's also with uh, OpenStack, you know, if something goes wrong and you need to debug. I, of course, could send it to my vendor, but I would also like to understand what's happening because I would like to understand OpenStack. I would not like to understand the product of my vendor. Now I would like to understand OpenStack. So then you go to the debugging and then you have to combine so many log files and most likely normally, normally you set it to information or error, but if you set a log file to debug, don't know if one ever tried it, but then you get so much information thrown at you that you're like, help, <laughs> what's happening here? And just to get back to the start of the question, uh, we also had some, although we chosen for a distro, also that took some <laughs> banging on the desk <laughs> trying to implement that general solution as uh, the solution 
by default didn't really fit within the enterprise. There were some things that needed to tweak, and our vendor was really eager to help us. And within a few, sh within a short period, also that product was really up and running. But it also took some uh, mindset changing from how does cloud meet the enterprise. Excellent. Yeah, I'd say uh, just on our, our journey too, probably our biggest mental obstacle was just getting all the IT people on the path to something new. Usually most IT people want to stay with next, next, finish style solutions versus actually having to, uh, to look at uh, some code. Um, so is there any developers in here? OK, good. So what's, what, guys, what's the top problem you want solved in Liberty? Start over there. Um, I would like to see s uh, about uh, something about uh, HA compute uh, capabilities. So like uh, if your compute node dies, you want the exactly. instances to restart? Yeah, exactly. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, we may sir. have some for you soon. OK. I'm already <laughs> laughing a little bit as I was in a session about it yesterday, the, the op session. It was yeah. quite entertaining, but indeed that would also be for us a real nice feature to have. Okay. So indeed, it also ease out operation and that kind of stuff in the end. Okay, you can pick another one if you want, or you can double down on that one. Okay, we got two for that now. All right, so I think our biggest challenge, and I mentioned this to get the, the other guys as we were uh, we were preparing for this talk, is from the, the networking side. We uh, we use provider networks because our uh, users just want to be on our on our corporate network, but there's some uh, some scaling limits as far as how big you can uh, Go and there was a, a Neutron blueprint that really hasn't gone anywhere that uh, essentially would create some some tagging so that when I do a boot I could say I want to be on the, the public network and the, the scheduler between Nova and Neutron would somehow figure out okay I'm going to put it on this physical hypervisor host and here's the uh, the appropriate network to put it on and I would love to see something like that get uh, picked up and worked on. Cool. Any Neutron people in here? Okay, well, we'll give them the Maybe video. I'll do another one. No, I'm we'll just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, still have an, I still have another one, Dust. Okay, go ahead, Dan. I found another one, and that's uh, some Horizon topics. Uh, Horizon currently is quite stateless, uh, as it cannot store information at, in a database. It has no database by default. And as an enterprise, we would like to have something like uh, the measure of the day or some disclaimer. There's a blueprint out, for, out there. It's already quite old and unfortunately nowhere picked up and already talked to Matthias Runge about it and each submit he's basically reminding some Keystone team about that he wants to have some table space but it's going nowhere and that's sometimes quite frustrating as something like a disclaimer would be really helpful in our case. Okay. Well, hey, David Lyle works for us and he's the PTL. Maybe we can, we can have a talk with him. Sandra, I saw you in here. You got that? We got one for David. Okay. Anon? Yeah, so I want to have the Neutron LBAS being, you know, developed properly, specifically. Properly, be yeah, more properly. specific. Yeah, more specific, actually, it's not really, you know, see, we put, uh, we took in a Juno and then we put a lot of effort in making, uh, you know, useful for us. Basically, you know, I, see, we built our own LBAS three years back. It is managing both EB and PayPal today. And if I'm moving away from that, and I'm going to be using open source, I need to have at least feature parity. And we are, I'm talking about after that, actually, what's the value it's going to bring in later. But if you want to move away from here to here, and we need to put serious effort onto that. Because the problem is, right, today, actually, everything is running on namespaces and uh, you, know, uh, you know, multiple plugins and then scheduling. You know, there are a lot of you know, features needs to be done. And uh, you know, there are a lot of debate whether Neutron will scale for that if you put all these you know, advanced uh, services within Neutron itself, or basically you know, take out uh, LBAS and keep it as a separate service, all the layer four to layer seven, right? So there are a lot of debates around it, whatever related to an IP, it has to be Neutron. I, I remember actually when the quantum started, when we pulled out uh, you know, Nova Network in San Francisco Summit, anything related to IP, we need to keep it in quantum. I completely get it. But if you don't, if we cannot scale beyond certain limit, we can't uh, you know, split things. And if somebody is here in Neutron Core or whatever, and then we talked about that in last session as well, and uh, I'm okay to have it in Neutron, but actually we need to make it work. So okay. that's what I wanted to see. And you're definitely Do showing you're an OG by saying quantum. Yes. That was what Neutron was <laughs> called before. before. Yeah. <laughs> it was done, yeah. Okay, uh, let's, uh, so um, Docker, CoreOS, Kubernetes, Mesos, Magnum, did I miss any? Uh, so there, there's lots of containers, lots of containers. 
lots of containers, um, and the app orchestration process tools. Um, so, so much of it with uh, is Google is like conceptually supporting. And by the way, thank you guys for coming to this session. One of my buddies from Google's like next door, so I'm glad you didn't get sucked over to the Google land. Um, are you guys using any of these technologies? And uh, do you run them on top, on the side, or underneath OpenStack? Well, we are currently not using that uh, kind of technologies, but uh, at the end of the year, we will start using Minum. Yeah. A any specific ones? You just focus on containers or orchestration too? Containers. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, I know my customers are using CoreOS with Docker within OpenStack. Okay, and so they're using DevOps or using CoreOS and, and Docker on top. So they take instances and then uh, and then run it on top. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I definitely see a ton of interest in uh, Docker. Is really the main one that uh, that I see my uh, my business units are really really looking at. Um, one of the things that, that I've observed here is there, there just doesn't seem to be a consistent uh, approach to what's going to happen with, with OpenStack. So we're, we're not really sure where we're going to end up going with it, but recognize that that's definitely something we need to, to figure out. Do we run it on top of OpenStack, potentially using, you know, Ironic at the bare metal level? Do we, you know, what, what do we end up doing? And I think we still need to figure that out. Would you guys be comfortable running on bare metal, or do you still like the concept of OpenStack giving you virtual machines to run containers? See, on? I, you know, looking at what what we do, um, being in an enterprise in general, most of my tenants trust each other as opposed right. to a public cloud provider. You know, I I'd, I'd like to see we start uh, we start running containers for multiple tenants on the same bare metal. Okay. Um, but you know, I I just kind of need to see what's what's going to happen with all the the stuff that's happening right now in OpenStack and whether that's even going to be a possibility because that doesn't seem to be where anybody's going right now. Right. Uh, and on your trailblazer, what what are you guys doing with containers? So we have all three. You okay. have all three. All three. <laughs> hey, which ones? I said Docker, CoreOS, Kubernetes, Mesos, Magnum, so or on top below no, to the side. Are, uh, okay. Hey, we're almost over. Yeah, so we recently started with Kubernetes, and we have Mesos. Actually, it is getting used for orchestration layer in our CI infrastructure. CI infrastructure, and of course, we are looking at you know Docker as well. As okay, well. all of them. Yeah, Man, it's a wild world out there. Okay, works for us. Um, so, uh, so we have five minutes. If there, anybody wants to know the audience question, we can probably take one more while we're going. Okay, this should be a, a quick one. What's your favorite project in OpenStack? Hit. Hit. Uh, our customers love it. I second that. Uh, two heats. It's getting hot. So um, I, I probably am just going to go with Nova. I mean, that's kind of a boring answer, but I mean, that gives you the building block to do everything else. It's one of the reasons you started, right? Yeah. You need to compute. Yeah. Uh, of course, Nova and Cinder. Are Neutron, everyone likes it only in the engineering side because we don't expose that to the users directly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, there's a couple key problems going on with operators. Let, let's try uh, just upgrades. Not too much into the details of it, but are you guys doing it once every six months, every day, every hour, or every year? Uh, every six months. OK, so you're on the integrated release cadence. Exactly. That's going away, sort integrated of, right? Integrated release. Whenever my vendor brings up one out. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to be on the, the six month, but like I said, we're on Ice House, so we're a little bit lagging. <laughs> so I want to be on no, up, upstream. But it's not really. So we are lacking behind at least six months to a year now. So okay. because of a lot of infrastructure to upgrade, but I explained to you offline about what are the challenges. Exactly. So we're all aspirational, but can't quite get there yet. Questions from the audience? Sure. I don't you want to do a yes or no question, or Jeopardy question, or normal question? Normal question, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if this is too similar to the question about uh, what feature you'd like to see, but I was wondering what's your like current pain points that you see? Like, What are the biggest problems you have with uh, your OpenStack deployment? OK, you guys only get to say one, top pain point. Top pain points are upgrades, of course, but. Uh, upgrades, yeah. I would say just, just troubleshooting as stuff just breaks and like there's no logs to try and figure out what happened. Uh, indeed, troubleshooting, and sorry, does, but uh, uh, second one, uh, educating oh, users to get uh, their application cloud ready. Uh, apps cloud ready, OK. Um, explaining you the new drone. To our users, playing Neutron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What? So another big pain point um, we hear a lot about is scale. I know I see Tim Bell out there, so I know he has a big environment, and and I know you guys have a big environment. And you're using cells. I know Rackspace has a big environment. They're using cells. Are you guys having issues with scaling, and, and how big can you get, and what do you? Where, how large would you like to be? Well, uh, we 
we scale to a uh, hundred of servers, but we haven't seen any uh, scalability problems. At first, when we tried with Habana, there were uh, some issues. Hundreds of servers per region? Uh, per region, oh. yeah. yeah, yeah. Not bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, we are okay with that, uh, but as we use uh, private uh, clouds, we don't need to grow that much uh, over 100. Okay, hey, I just got news that uh, we gotta wrap it up. So, uh, like, thank you guys for doing this panel. Hopefully uh, people heard and the developers will watch us all later, I am sure. And uh, hey, everybody, thanks to the, to the panel. Right? <laughs>